Do we need to start talking about Dmitry Voronkov getting Calder votes? I say yes, and that's what we're going to talk about on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Lockdown Blue Jackets, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about your favorite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every single day. Lockdown Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. I also have to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app, use promo code Lockdown NHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Uh, Blue Jackets had a big win in uh, in last night's game, and uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the game on Friday against Buffalo. We're going to talk about uh, Dmitry Vronkov, because I think it's time to re-up the campaign for uh, Dmitry Vronkov for Calder, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what's next for the Blue Jackets, because uh, next for the Blue Jackets is the same dang team. So uh, I guess let's let's start off with last night's win, uh, because the Rangers went into that game with the best points percentage in the league. And they were, I think, what, fourth in the standings by, by points? Second in the standings by points, excuse me. Um, second only to the Vancouver Canucks, but they had two games in hand on them. They had a 10-game win streak going, which was a franchise record, and uh, they were pushing hard for a perfect record in the month of February. They did not do that. Uh, The Blue Jackets, of all teams, uh, decided, actually, we're going to win this game. Uh, And the Blue Jackets now, uh, after what feels like years and years of struggling uh, in front of... The Rangers, I don't know. I think Bobrovsky always had a problem with the Rangers. Um, the Blue Jackets are, I believe, 2-0-1 against the Rangers. Uh, they've had they've got two regulation wins and a shootout loss in the season series. They finished that season series off on uh, Wednesday night, I believe, if I'm reading the, the date right here. Um, so they have a chance to win win out, basically, to get points in every single game versus the Re- the Rangers, and uh, I think that would be pretty fun. Um, this whole game, there was there was a lot going on. Uh, everyone had, I think, a pretty great game, um, even, you know, the guys that I am usually pretty uh, pretty critical of. Uh, I thought Provorov was solid. I thought Roslovic was solid. Uh, those two guys really juicing up their, um, their trading. Uh, but, you know, that Russian line, as always, incredible. Dmitry Vronkov was on the ice, by the way, uh, at even strength. He had just over 10 minutes of ice time and 25 shot attempts for and nine against while he was on the ice. Um, 12 shots for and three against while he was on the ice. Like, uh, if you look individually, uh, he had, again, in, in 10.49 of ice time, he had six shots, personally and uh, 10 shot attempts. So he's doing just fine. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Dmitry Vronkov um, later on, but this might have been one of the Blue Jackets' best games of the season. I thought Elvis was excellent. Uh, I thought, like I said, I thought everyone was great. Um, Few too many shots. I think 40 is too many, especially for a team like the Rangers. Um, We had the inevitable Tony Panarin goal, the unfortunate uh, Adam Edstrom goal that went actually went in off of um, Jake Bean's foot, but they didn't crumple. I feel like the Blue Jackets of earlier in the season, that second goal would have gone in and they would have just given up and been like, well, we're just going to lie down and let them have this game. They didn't. Uh, Jack Roslovic scored, I think, what, like 45? seconds later, um, and then a beautiful pass to Ivan Provorov for the 4-2 goal, and uh, they survived f- like, what, three minutes of uh, of empty net, uh, which is, again, if you're the Blue Jackets, pretty impressive. Uh, almost three and a half. Uh, Jonathan Quick only played 56-41, so that's, what, three minutes 20 
uh, of, of Empty Net Time that the Blue Jackets held their own against. Uh, they scored on the power play. They didn't allow a penalty kill goal, a, a shorthanded goal. Uh, everything was was coming up Blue Jackets. Like I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, what? What more did I want from this game? You know, um, and like maybe faceoffs. Uh, looking at this, um, Karali and Vronkov were under fifty percent. Karali only won fourteen percent of his faceoffs, which seems low for him because usually he's in the upper half of the team. Uh, but Cole Sillinger, 153, uh, Boone Jenner, 150, Marchenko, 100, which I assume means that he took one and won it. Um, and then uh, Roslovic won one of the three that he took again, I assume. Uh, so, yeah, like even even like getting nitpicky like that. Um, I think also like you can look at if I pull up the, the on ice stats, um, the... Gaudreau, Jenner, Roslovic line, though they scored, they were outchanced pretty severely. Um, they did lose that matchup. Um, I'm not sure who they were matched up against. Let me see if I can find the, the shift chart. Um, they were typically matched up against the, the Kreider line. So like uh, Chris Kreider, Mika's manager, and apparently Jimmy VC is on that line now, which sure. Uh, but they've got Adam Fox, who's no slouch on defense, on the top pairing, and then apparently Ryan Lindgren, who I don't know a ton about. But So it makes sense that they kind of got outmatched, because I think that's a very strong top line. Chris Kreider always gives the Blue Jackets fits. I think Mika Zibanejad is a really underrated player in this league. Um, but the Blue Jackets did great, I thought. Um, and frankly, I thought they did okay uh, in the last game as well against the, uh, against the Sabres. Obviously, that was a... Uh, that was a, a loss, but like a 2-1 loss in a game in which, again, I'm just pulling up the uh, the numbers for it once I find them. Um, the Blue Jackets had 26 shots and couldn't beat um, Uka Pekka Lukanen. Like, Daniel Tarasov made 35 saves. He couldn't do anything more. You would have liked to see the Blue Jackets get a little bit more from that game. But again, they got a power play goal. That's two straight games that they've got the power play goals in. They didn't allow penalty kill goals. They're starting to maybe climb out of the basement in special teams, which would be very exciting. Um, and then, yeah, just again, Tarasov makes a ton of excellent saves and then one from a distance goes in. And Connor Clifton with his first goal in like 70 games because the Blue Jackets love to do this. Um, two solid games. I thought, and then, you know, you look at the, the Ducks game, which again, I thought was solid. The scoreline doesn't necessarily say the same thing, a 7-4 scoreline, but if you take away, again, the one goal allowed to an injured goalie lying face down on the ice, and then the two goals on a uh, ice-cold goalie who played three minutes, 50 seconds, or whatever it was, I feel fine about that game. I thought that, again, a really good game. That's three straight games where we had solid goaltending from either Tarasov in the Ducks game and the Sabres game to Muslikins, who, again, was excellent tonight. Um, I had someone ask me on Twitter what I thought about the Panarin goal and whether it was um, a soft goal or whether it was, like, just a really good shot. And, like, I kind of err on the fact that, like, maybe Muslikins plays that a little differently if he has another chance. But also, I feel like that's a really underrated shot from like an underrated shot angle i guess uh you know and it's just it's a really it's a really good shot i i'm not mad uh, i'm sure elvis would like that one back but i'm sure he'd like every goal he allows back you know um and then the second goal uh again own goal self-inflicted um it is what it is so and he also stopped 38 out of 40 shots which is good for a 950 save percentage so like again excellent night from elvis not mad about it uh and that's again three good games in a row for the blue jackets they're two and one in those games could very easily have been three and oh um if not for again a a weird bounce um and an unlucky goal but hey we're starting to see promise and i know everyone is i'm tired of saying this as well like we're all tired of they're getting close guys they're getting close I don't think they're getting close. I think this season is, it is what it is, um, but it seems like the team is starting to put things together and the team is starting to figure things out. And I'm pointing to, you know, the Russian line, 
for example, who uh, I looked this up actually because, again, someone on Twitter asked, uh, of the lines on the Blue Jackets that have played more than 100 minutes, I believe they have the best um, shot attempt share or the third best shot attempt share on the team. Uh, I'm just going to pull that up again to see if that's that's changed after um, tonight's game. Okay, here we go. Of the lines that have played over 100 minutes together, um, Machenko, Vronkov, and Chinakov have uh, the second best shot attempt share at 5 on 5 uh, at 54%, I believe. Um, I found it and then immediately lost it. 50, just over 50%. Um, and they've also played together more than any other line in the in in the game in the in the team uh they've played together for 21 games uh and they have outscored their opponents 11 to 7 in that time which again is the uh the best goals for percentage um on the team in uh again of of teams that have played of game of lines that have played more than 100 minutes together, they are, again, I think, third best in uh, in plus minus, which plus minus is kind of a stupid stat. We've been over this, but hey, you love to see it. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Russian line, and we're going to talk a little bit more about Dmitry Voronkov and why he should be getting Calder notice, but probably isn't going to. That's coming up in just a second on Locked on Blue Jackets. First, I'm going to tell you guys about Camino Consulting, because uh, you've heard of our online families and couples courses. You've taken advantage of the locked on 25% discount running to the end of month. But have you heard about their live seminars in both sport and business? The challenge in differentiating candidates and recruits is an endless battle. Everyone can demonstrate their measurables and their qualifications, but everyone knows it's the intangibles that matter when those things are similar. Contact, contact Camino Consulting for their team and management seminars to get a peek behind the curtain and watch your next recruiting class or hiring group become one of the most effective you've ever seen. Both because you identified the right candidates and because you've learned how to communicate and motivate them in accord with their own preferences. If you're not in business management or working with a team, they also pay referrals. Make some money making your workplace and favorite teams better. Every group works together and they makes them better at the end of year one than week one. So contact Camino Consulting at CaminoConsulting.ca and get on the fast track to understanding. Welcome back to Locked on Blue Jackets. Let's talk about Dmitry Vronkov because that is, in, in my opinion, a top three Calder candidate. And like, am I biased because he's on my team? Sure, maybe. But he has got in 51 games... He's got 30 points. He's got 16 goals. Uh, the only rookies with more goals than him are Connor Bedard and I believe Marco Rossi in uh, Minnesota. They both have 17. Um, and I didn't look it up for, for Connor Bedard, but uh, uh, for, for Marco Rossi, excuse me. But Dmitry Vronkov has a better goals per 60. He's doing all of this. And uh, he's got, he's scoring 1.35 goals for every 60 minutes of ice time. Conor Bedard is scoring 1.21 goals for every 60 minutes of ice time. Uh, and Marco Rossi is somewhere else on this list that I haven't seen yet. Oh, there he is. 1.07 goals per 60. So, like, he's doing about the same as those guys, but he's doing it with way less ice time. Uh, Bedard, I think, averages about 19 minutes of ice time. Voronkov is doing this in 13 and a half minutes. He has, I believe, the 13th most ice time average uh, by on the team. So, like, again, what are we what are we doing here? Um, he's one of those players that should they should be playing more. And I don't understand why they are not, because he's clearly and again, I think partially it's the chemistry. I think partially it's he loves playing with these guys. He likes playing with the Russians. Um, Karol Marchenko has really kind of come alive playing on a line with Vronkov. I think Chinakov's going through a little bit of a cold streak right now, but Dmitry Vronkov is, again, much like Karol Marchenko was doing last year, is quietly doing some very impressive things on a very, very mid to bad Blue Jackets team. 
Uh, he's scoring. If he played all eighty two games, I believe he'd have twenty six goals on the on the season. Um, I'm just going to look up how many he's on pace for right now because I believe the the record was set by Marchenko last year um, with what twenty one goals, I believe. Um, he's currently on pace for 24 goals in 76 games, 45 points, which would beat uh, Marchenko's rookie numbers. It would beat Kent Johnson's rookie numbers, Cole Sillinger's rookie numbers. Um, he should get called a consideration. He should. Should he win? Maybe not. I think uh, the the final two is going to be Bedard and, um, and Brock Faber, and then it will be a third guy who, you know, mostly gets in based on third place and third and second and fourth place votes. Um, and why shouldn't that guy be, be Dimitri Voronkov? I, he's not the rookie of the year candidate from the Blue Jackets that I was expecting in the, in the start of the season. You know, we talked a lot of, of smack about uh, David Juracek being a dark horse for the Calder. We talked a lot about Adam Fantilli being less of a dark horse for the Calder. Um, Dimitri Voronkov should be getting Calder com- consideration. Um, and like, honestly, the more I watch him play, the more I'm like, man, should he win? Um, and I think that might be, um, that might be madness, but he definitely should be in the conversation because he's doing about the same as what Bedard is doing in terms of goal scoring. He's just doing it in, uh, slightly, he's doing it in less ice time. And that's the most impressive thing I think is obviously Bedard's got, what 13 more points than uh than Vronkov? Vronkov's got oh no, 10 more points than Vronkov. Um and he's projected to finish with about 15 or 16 more points, uh, provided that they both play through to the end of the season. I'm just gonna knock on wood about that because I don't think we need any more curses on this team and any more injuries. Uh Bedard projected 61 points. Um Bronkov was projected, I believe, 45 points. So, like, a 15-point differ- difference, which is fine. Um, so, yeah, Bedard is probably going to win the Calder. But to not have Bronkov in the con- in the conversation, I think, is really doing a disservice to what he's doing on, a, on what has been, for long stretches of the season, a miserably bad Blue Jackets team. Uh, so, that's my pitch for for um this episode and what will probably become a weekly if not semi-weekly uh or or multi-weekly i don't know what the word is for doing it more than once a week um a a, a common pitch is we're going to check in with uh dimitri franca's calder odds um maybe we'll we'll have a look on fanduel and see what his odds are for winning the whole dang thing maybe we'll put a little bit little bit of money on that but for my money right now dimitri frankov is one of the best forwards on the blue jackets should be getting more ice time. Uh, and that average, obviously, like, is taking into account the start of the season when he wasn't playing a ton. Um, you know, he was playing eight minutes, nine minutes, uh, 10 minutes, 11 minutes a game. Uh, and then, you know, recently he's been playing a little bit more. He played almost, he played over 17 and a half, December 16th against New Jersey. Um, and then uh, the last kind of couple of weeks or so, he's been averaging around about 14 minutes of ice time uh his ice time again has kind of slowly been creeping up since he got hot but it's just you love to you love to see it and he's one of the more fun blue jackets to watch as well uh i think you know because big guy not the prettiest skater in the world but he gets around um again clearly has bonded with uh marchenko specifically um there was a fun kind of the Blue Jackets' first goal was Marchenko to Vronkov, and then the second goal was uh, Vronkov to Marchenko, which, again, I, th- I think that's fun. I think it's neat. Um, and I'm really excited to see what this line could do, basically given the freedom to go out and 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 do that, because they uh, they're working on it. They're really working on something special here, I think, with this line. Um, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun to figure out, uh, in a minute, we will, uh, check in with the new guy. We'll check in with our, uh, Bemstrom watch because he had his, uh, first game for the Penguins. That's all coming up in just a second here on Locked on Blue Jackets. 
First, I've got to tell you guys about Sleeper, because uh, the season is winding down, and obviously the Blue Jackets haven't performed to where we want them to, but regardless of where they are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing league playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because you can win 100 times your cash in those contests. All you have to do is pick whether guys like Voronkov, Marchenko, uh, Kreider, Panarin will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in any given game. To win 100 times your money, all you need to do is correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me right, Blue Jackets fans? Just get eight guesses right, and you are going to win 100 times your money. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code Locked On NHL. You'll go up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Welcome back to Locked on Blue Jackets. Uh, we're going to finish off today uh, with just a little bit of talk about, well, partially about Emil Bemstrom and partially about his uh, his uh, his opposite, I guess, on the Blue Jackets, the guy he was traded for. Um, I didn't hate Alex Nylander's um, debut. I'm just looking up what his, uh, what his final numbers were. He didn't play a ton. Um, he played, what, 10, 11 minutes of ice time, I think it was. 11, 23, uh, didn't record any shots or um, points, didn't take a penalty, which is which is always good, uh, didn't make any hits, but was not, like, frankly, was not a complete liability, uh, which is saying something, frankly, with some of the, uh, some of the performances I've seen this season. Uh, in terms of... On ice stuff, uh, he was on the ice for 11 shot attempts, 4, 13 against, so again, not terrible. Uh, markedly better than the gaudreau jenner Roslovic line, but people don't want to talk about that, do they? Um, no, that was that was mean. Um, as a line, uh, with Cole Sillinger and Kent Johnson, they were at about 50%, uh, 11 shot attempts, 4, 12 against. Uh on the ice for um, an expected goals, 4 of 0.78, and expected goals against for... 30 uh 0.33 so that was good for second on the team and expected goals four percent so creating uh and not giving up much when you kind of look into the the nitty-gritty stats so like i thought that line was fine i i thought it was a good idea for a line um i again i think maybe it should have had a little bit more ice time but that's not necessarily because they were good and another line was bad i just think that Boone Janet plays too much, and it makes me nervous uh, because this is a dude who I believe two or three seasons in a row has had his season ended because of a, a back injury. Um, and I feel like, hey, maybe don't play Boone Jenner for 24 minutes a night, but that's just me. So, hey, um, I just think that you could you could parcel the, um, parcel the ice time out a little bit more effectively. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so I like that line. I think it's a fun combination of a skill line and a an energy line. Um, I think Cole Sillinger, again, he hasn't really produced in the last uh, little while. I'm just pulling up his his numbers. His last five games, he's only got one point, an assist at Anaheim. Uh, but I feel like he's he's really started to come on as a, um, a solid two-way player, gets some penalty kill time now, um, and has been unlucky. Uh, and I don't know. I, I like that line. I think they'll probably keep it together for the next game again, which is again against the Rangers. So again, if it ain't broke, don't fix. Um, I'll be interested to see what they do with the goaltending because I believe the Blue Jackets play um, the Hurricanes the very next day. So do you want Elvis against the Hurricanes and Tarasov against the Rangers, or do you flip that? Who could say? Um, so that's that's a, a conversation for for another episode, but. I like Nylander's debut a lot. I thought it was inoffensive, which, frankly, for a third-line player, uh, that's about as good as I was hoping for from uh, from Nylander. I still think he doesn't finish the season with the team. I think he goes down to um, Cleveland and uh, tears it up down there just in time for playoffs. So um, that's that. Uh, we're going to finish off just one quick note. Lil Bemstrom made his debut for the Penguins and uh, scored a goal. So uh, for those of you keeping count at home, 
That is one out of the six goals needed for Dmitry for, uh, for uh, Emil Bemstrom to score this season. And if he does, the Blue Jackets' sixth round pick goes to a third round pick. So uh, he's one sixth of the way there already and has, what, I think 27 games left, 28 games left. I looked this up and then completely forgot because, of course, I did. So, uh, like I said, that's uh, that's fun. Good for him. Uh, there were, that that game was was wild anyway. I looked up the score earlier just to see what was happening because it was four four last I checked. I think the Penguins won it seven to six. So sure, why not? Um, just a big, a real, a real chaos game. Uh, but hopefully, Bemstrom finds his niche in Pittsburgh, scores those six goals, um, and then the Blue Jackets get a nice little third round pick in a couple of years, which most people will probably forget about by then. So we're like, oh hey, a surprise extra third round pick. We love that. So uh, that's kind of just a little bit of an update on on Bemstrom. We'll do again. We'll do these semi regularly, depending on how often he scores. Which might be he might go on a hot streak. He loves to do that. Um, we'll see. But that's all I've got for today. Uh, tomorrow we've got another prospect profile. Uh, I don't remember who is next on my list. I believe next on the list is uh, Luke Misa, who is this year's Gavin Brindley. Um, and so uh, I've got Sam McGilligan of uh, Scouching and Puck Preps to uh, come and talk to me about him because we know he loves small fast forwards and so do the Blue Jackets. So uh, that's going to be tomorrow's episode. Thank you for listening to this episode, for making us your first listen of the day every single day. Locked on Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms over on YouTube and on Sirius XM. Uh, I've been Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. You can find the show at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at LockedOnBlueJackets at gmail.com. And until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on.